Father. Hallelujah, Jesus, for God is worthy. Hallelujah. He's worthy on this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. Continue to give God praise. Uh, continue to lift the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. At this time, oh, glory to God. Uh, I present to you on this morning. Glory to God. Uh, no other than our Bishop Alton Samuels. Hallelujah, Jesus. Give God some praise as, as he brings forth the bread of life. Hallelujah. Present to you Alton Samuels. I'm presenting to you the Lord Jesus Christ. Why don't you give him a praise? Can somebody lift him up this morning. Can somebody give him worship, true worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. The name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run at it and they are saved. Amen. We certainly thank God for uh, the mobility of our limbs this morning. Amen. And more so, we thank God for being a keeper. And the provider. Amen. And he, he, he sustains us. And he increases us. As he had benefits to us daily. And his, his words are true. And he, he cannot go back on his word. And whatever he promises, uh, he's surely going to bring it to pass. And one thing we can do with the Lord is to, as a saint in Jamaica, you can put your pot on the fire and wait for him. And it all depends on what size pot you you put on the fire. But rest assured, if you have gas or uh, whatever you use to bring fire to your pot, if you put that pot on based on what you're asking God for, you turn the stove on, make sure water is in it, God is going to put some food in that pot. That's who he is. And his promises are sure. He promised he will supply your every need according to his riches. Isn't he rich? Amen. We thank God. This morning. Thank God for every one of you. Y'all looking beautiful. Amen. I hope your soul is looking beautiful also in the sight of the Lord. Somebody say amen. Amen. Thank God again for another privilege, another Sunday morning uh, to come to worship. You may have your seats. Uh, it's the best day of my life, Sundays. I look forward to church. Amen. Amen. Uh, I don't know how folks stay home on Sundays. I can't do it. But I 
Sunday is excitement for me. It's like payday for me. You know, on Fridays you want to go to work and you're going to collect your pay. Sunday is payday for me. That's the day that I, that's probably when you know you're saved. Yeah. Uh, when you know you're saved, you'll, you want to be in church. Amen. Uh, I can't stay home in church. It's, it's going on. Um, ain't nobody going to agree with me. Amen. It's like torture. I tried it already, it didn't work. I got tortured. Amen. Thank God. And we we are so uh, in a life of options. Y'all know y'all know them that sister what's his name, sister? Everybody y'all know her, right? So what y'all looking over there like you don't know her? Everybody's staring over there. She's nice dress on, she looks good. Yeah, there's hot back there too. Clover have on hot and what's his name on hot. That's why you miss stuff. You're nosy. You gotta listen. Listen. God is speaking to somebody. You gotta listen. Amen. That's why we miss out when God we attention to something else. You know, but we God is wonderful. Kept us all week. Move our hands, no arthritis, no diabetes, no. High blood pressure. Amen. And we're all good. Thank God. And even if we, and let me speak for me, even if I died, I would have been better. Uh, I'm talking to those who are afraid of dying. Amen. That part I control. Amen. To be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. Only if you're saved. If you're not saved, to be absent of this body is to be present with your Lord and the devil. Amen. We certainly thank God. Amen. I want to bring a word to you this morning. We are so glad that. Um, my wife is here. Amen, Dr. Samuels and all the all the dignitaries. I I was um, I think I might do it after the the, uh, the telecast, but I was looking at Janae. She looks so nice this morning in her yellow and red. You don't have to blush. Amen. Amen. I hope she get married before the year is over. She's looking wonderful, right? Somebody say amen. 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 Oh, you're looking on Tracy for Tracy say yes, what the Lord said. Amen. Isn't it just stand and turn they didn't see you. Just stand and turn. I'm taking some more time. Just stand up there for Bishop. Just stand up and turn around, yeah. Yes, just turn around and say, look, look at her. Yes. Yes. That's all right. She'll live again. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. We're going to talk to you this morning very briefly from the word of the Lord. We. Amen. As the Lord dropped in my spirit, I will give to you the book of Habakkuk. And, uh, I want to direct the thought for uh, the morning from the book of Habakkuk, the second chapter verse 4b. Let us pray. Father, we so grateful this morning for the privilege of standing before your people and your people sitting before me. We thank you for your presence and your anointing as you would minister to us through your words. We ask that you will touch 
the hearts of your people to be receptive and these lips of claim to say what thus saith the Lord. Have your way this morning in our lives. In Jesus' name, everybody say amen. Uh, do you find it? Could you read 4B for me? Could you read 4B for me? But the just shall what? No. By his faith. Amen? Therefore, Unless at any time I will make them slip. Thank you, Mr. Helm. So we're going to be looking at the just shall live by his faith. Uh, the concentration of our theme would be um, the just shall live by his faith. Uh, we are so accustomed to the just shall live by faith. And we know that one straight out that when you recited a while ago, you're getting ready to tell me that the just shall live by faith. Look at us, what you know. And some weeks ago, I told you that uh, we spoke about now faith. Anybody remember? Now faith. Uh, as we look closely or to entertain this verse microscopically, we will see that the writer established a personalized attitude by saying his faith. Uh -huh. And uh, when you get into the uh, point of saying his faith, we are not doing a general statement we are dealing with individuals uh, you as an individual shall live by your faith uh, not by faith but your faith uh, how much faith do you have to live uh, you can't live by my faith you only can live by your faith Mm -hmm. All the others are the verses that speak about faith with the exception of chapter 11, book of Hebrew, where we find the hall of fame, where it deals with Abraham and Enoch and all those guys, they go through faith and with faith they this and they that. But today we want to address faith in an individualized position. It's about how you see faith. It's about how you personally address faith as you live. As I said before, you can't uh, use my faith. You can't use nobody's faith. You got to use your faith. Uh -huh. And the Bible says if you have what? Faith uh, as a grain of mustard seed, you can say to whatever it is and it shall be removed. And uh, it all depends on how much faith you have. And you don't need a whole lot of faith to do anything with God if God is in it with you. All you need is just a little bit of faith. Somebody help me here this morning. Amen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. So whatever you need, faith is it. Now you didn't hear that. Uh -huh. And a lot of people go around worrying and uh, having problems with things that they're waiting for. If you just put faith in it and wait, faith and wait, God will bring it to pass for you. 
Habakkuk drives the message home very clearly by saying his faith. The just shall live by his faith. You shall live by your faith. You can't live by your mama's faith or your papa's faith, but you got to live by your faith. Uh, so my intention today is to uh, let you uh, uh, know as you travel this pilgrim highway, uh, you cannot use or, uh, or identify your faith with nobody else's faith. You got to develop your own faith for yourself. Amen. You got to know God for yourself and know what God will do and what he will not do. Amen. You may use the testimony and, and be, be an overcomer, but the, the, the sure can't use the faith to overcome. You may use somebody's testimony to overcome, but you can't use somebody's faith to come over. Somebody say amen. You got to use your own level of faith. I, I can speak a word and believe a word and God releases a word and do what I ask him to do with my faith, but you can't use the faith that I use to get things done for yourself. So you got to develop a level of faith, believe in God that whatever you ask God for is already done. Y'all not even hearing me this morning. And the problem we have today in church is that people are halfway believing God. And the Bible says, you dare not ask God for anything and waver. He's not going to give it to you. You got to believe God that is done when you ask him for it. And the reason why we're not getting things is, I'm trying to take my time here. I'll just reach again. The reason why we're not getting things from God is because we are halfway believing God. And some of us are like Peter. At first, we believe God for the thing. Oh, God, the word release, and I believe God, and as soon as I get to the door, it's gone. Peter walked on water because he believed to get to Jesus. But when he realized that he was on water, his faith dropped, and he dropped also in the water. And I believe that he was just this close because the Bible says that Jesus stretch his hand out and, and hold on to Peter. So he got to his destination, but before he got the release, hallelujah, amen, he gave up on God. You got to believe God to the end. Amen. If, you're, if whatever you ask God for, he has not released it to you and you die, your faith will live on because you're going to trust God till you die. I wish I could talk to somebody this morning. I'm going to believe God all the way. If I, he didn't do what I asked him to do, if I die, it's going to live on because I'm going to trust God till I die. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So you got to trust him. For whatever it is. And if you don't get it and you die. It's still good. Because God remains God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Don't give up on your faith. Trust God to the end. Somebody say amen. The Bible says in Romans 10 and 18. That faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You got to hear the word of God. The only way your faith is going to increase is by the word of God. You got to study to show yourselves approved a workman that needed not to be ashamed, but to be able to rightly divide the word of truth. That's the only way you're going to know God for yourself is by studying the mind of God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. When you study the word, you know who God is. You know what he's going to do for you. You know what his promises are. You know his amen and his days and his known. You know what God's going to bring to pass for you. But you got to study the word. The reason why the enemy don't want you to read, because if you read the word, you're going to be so blessed. If you study the word, you're going to be so blessed. So he keep us from the word, the mind of God. This is the written mind of God. The word. And the people of God, we stay away from it. 
but is the prescription for the blessings of God's people. No wonder there are so many faithless people around town. Faithless. O B E of little faith. Not a mountain of faith, but little faith. And a little faith will get you where God wants you to be so he can release a thing in your life. Can I tell you something? Faith is trusting God. Faith is believing God when you even don't even see the thing. You don't need to see the thing to trust God for the thing. You just got to believe God and keep on ticking like ever ready battery. Just trust God and keep on moving. That's what faith is. Believe in God for the impossible. When you don't see it, when it don't look good, when it looks like it's not going to happen, you still believe God. When all hell breaks loose before you and this thing don't look good, I'm going to trust God in all my ways. I'm going to say, God, I'm going to trust you for this. I don't see it. It doesn't look like it's going to happen, but your timing is not my timing. So I'm going to trust you anyhow. When you come through for me, God, I'll just be right there waiting on you to come through for me. But I'm not going to give up. I'm going to trust you till my change come. Hallelujah. He may not move when we want him to move. But if you would just wait for God, Our timing is not God's timing. God is not dictated by Timex. Hey, God, but one day is a thousand years, and a day is a thousand years to God. God does not, amen, is not relatively connected to our time, year, months, but God is on his own timing, a period of time which is called Aeon. And God knows the way through the wilderness. He knows when to give and when not to give. He knows your needs even before you ever think. I wish I can talk to somebody or ever ask of him. Faith is the Christian lifestyle to live by. The only way we're going to live is by and through faith. We can't live no other way. There is no other way for the Christian to live but by faith. And without faith, you all sleeping already. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. We have to have faith in God for our deliverance. Trust God for our deliverance. Even when we can't see our way out of the situation, God, I'm going to trust you anyhow. My way looked dark and weary, but God, I'm going to trust you anyhow. I can't see my way, but God, you are the way, the truth, and the life. And I'm going to trust you because you promise you're going to bring me through. And I'm not going to turn back now. I'm going to trust you all the way. If you have been justified, then now you are just. 
And if you are just, the only way you're going to live is by faith. And faith doesn't mean although you have a lot of money, you still need faith. Mm. Although things might be going well with you, you still need faith. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. So if you want to please God, you must have faith. The Bible says, Hebrew 11 and 6, but without faith, it's impossible to please. Touch someone next to you and tell them you need faith, your own faith. You need faith. Your own faith tells somebody else you don't need just to believe. You need faith to believe because if you believe God, hallelujah, Abraham, believe God. God told Abraham, get up from out of your land, from your kindred, and get into a land that I will show you. Abraham didn't have no GPS. He didn't know where he was going. Hallelujah. But God gave him a word and God told him to get up out of Mesopotamia. Abraham was a guy of idolatry, but in due season, God used him and bring him into a place. Hallelujah. You got to be careful who you bring with you while you're walking this faith journey. Abraham brought Lot, but Lot only needed a piece of the Lot. But God delivered Abraham, got into this place. Lot said, I need to get out from you, uncle. But I need somebody to know that while you're walking this Christian journey, be careful who come with you. Ah, there's some people that's coming not to see you through but to abort your vision be careful who you connect with it's not everybody that say i love you really love you it's not everybody that say i'm coming with you really want to go with you but abraham packed up he said sister abraham we got to go god says we got to go. And I believe, Miss Sarah said, but Abraham, where are you going? Who going with you? He said, well, my dear, the Lord says it. I believe it. And that settled it. Come with me. We're going to a place that the Lord promised. And if God promised me, I'm not going to turn back got on the way Lot decide to get rebellious and to change the vision don't you know when people act up in your life they're getting ready to deteriorate your faith level for you to think that God didn't say it but if God promised you he's going to fix it he will fix fix it if he promise you he is going to heal you he is going to heal you and you can go to the bank with that promise because he is a God that fulfill all of his promises trust and obey because there is no An idol worshiper. Believe God. Pack up everything that he has. Get ready to take a journey that he didn't know where he was going. And I believe Abraham got to bed that night and he said honey we're leaving in the morning sorry i said well if you're going 
I'm going with you. I'm not going to stay back without you. Where you go, I will go. And they got to a place. I'm getting ready to close. But Abraham, coming from where he was coming from, his background, trusted God. If Abraham trusts God, you can trust him. If Abraham believed God, you can believe God. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter what the devil is telling you. God going to fix it. I wish I could get some folks to believe me. This morning, the devil will come to let you believe God can't do it. But if you trust God, every move you make, he's going to deliver you. Have faith in God for your deliverance. He will fix it. He's going to fix it. Just believe him. Don't give up. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not to your own understanding in all of your ways. So we we're in a place now with God and because he didn't come when you want him your faith has shifted from where it was getting ready to doubt God to do what he promised. Can I talk to somebody personalized this morning? He's going to do it. Mm. Uh, can I release a word in somebody's spirit? He's going to do it. And it doesn't matter how long it takes. It doesn't matter what day he does it, what month, what year, as long as you keep on believing that God's going to do it. Some of you have been praying for situations for a number of years now, and it seems like your fate is about to be shifted in a local place. Trust God because he's coming through for you. Uh, he's coming through for you. Uh, and then every time, every time that... Uh, you see the symptoms of the things that you pray to God for. Uh, it causes you, amen, to doubt God. But I don't want you to doubt God this morning. Oh, God is going to get worse before he get better. Uh, can I talk to somebody? Uh, somebody going to die before somebody live. Uh, something going to get harder before it gets softer. But when you know that God is on the ship with you, you don't have to be worried. It may seem like he's sleeping in the in the part of the ship. And you might want to go down and say, but Jesus cares now that we perish. Although he might be sleeping, he still have your fears in his mind and he's going to work it out in his time. Hallelujah. But God, I've waited so long. That husband, that wife that behaves bad, that child, 
when God. When you're going to do this. God says, I'm coming. Don't lose faith. I'm going to do it. Just have faith. Trust him to the end. And you know what bad? When you see the thing face you and you've been praying for so long. Don't curse nobody. Don't cast no spell on nobody. Don't wish nobody to die. God said to bless and not curse. When you see that person, lift them up. I wish I can talk to somebody personally this morning. When you see the thing, bless God for the thing. That thing didn't come to kill you. It come to bless you. But if you just wait a little while longer, that situation will be resolved and dissolve. And it doesn't matter what it is. I wish somebody would believe me this morning. Don't you ever lose hope in God. Doesn't matter how long it takes. He's going to do it. God sent an angel, Abraham. Say, Abe. You have a son. Sarah heard. She went into her tent. And laughed. Sarah had all reasons to laugh, as some of us would in today's society. But I'm old. And the Bible says that Sarah was beyond the age of childbearing. Our bakery shut down, closed for business. Had no thought of having children because mentally that's over. I'm talking to somebody. Mentally in Sarah's mind, this will never happen. So when Abraham was entertaining the angels, they said, Abraham, you shall have a son. Sarah. 
same time this year. Sarah heard as she ran in her tent and she laughed. She said, these angels are crazy. As a matter of fact, my Lord, we have now transformed to our own tent. He have his own tent and I have mine. But God promised Abraham that he's going to give him a son. And he's going to make him father of many nations. Now, God, you're crazy. I'm now 99, let's say 98 years old and you're telling me that this thing you promised me is not coming to pass where is this going to happen this is when God don't make no sense father of many nations God promised some of you some things that you're not even seeing uh, the fragrance of it yet. And you're wondering, God, when you're going to make this change. And Abram, Sarah said to Abram, look, this thing that God promised you, please take my unmaid, Agar. We're going to fix it. We're going to fix God's business for him taking so long. Abraham, take Agar and go lay with her and bring forth that son that God been promising us. I don't think I can uh, be a bearer of child or children. I can't do it, God. I can't do it, Abraham. So uh, be a substitute. Take Agar. Whatever God promised you, settle for that. No second best. Can I talk to somebody? Don't try to fix God's business. Don't sort it out for him. Don't take... Listen... You have asked God for certain uh, looks, certain condition, certain shape, certain amount of money. So you have asked God for this? With specifications? God is here, must be curly. Because I want curly children here. This one's skin is too dark. I want brown children. But you have asked God. You have, you have given God a specific specification to work with. Are you getting ready to settle? Because God is taking too long. Say, so God, right now, whatever come into my net, I'm going to grab it. That thing going to bite you. Some of us change so often, and God. God, here is the plan. 
I want you to work with this plan. And you walk away and leave it. Let God finish the architectural framework of your life. If you want it black, ask him for black. Short and stucky are tall and black and white. Don't look at anything. Am I talking to somebody? Don't look at anything else. Look at the architectural plan that you have given to God and follow the plan. Any time you detour, it's going to come back and bite you. So Sarah, so let me finish. Honey, God is taking too long. Let's fix it for him. As a matter of fact, God has other people to take care of. I have so many and maiden, but I think you will enjoy laying with Agar. Take that one. And Abram went in. She got pregnant. But Ishmael could not be the promised child. The promised trial, although Abram was the seed carrier, Hagar was supposed to be the seed bearer. Sarai, not Hagar nor Mary, but Sarai. And the minute you detour, from the plan, you have lost faith in God. Not because something looked good come on the scene. Uh, Let me help you here. When God is getting ready to release the thing for you, it's going to give you choices. Especially when he knows you're not sure, it's going to give you choices. Uh, so you can say, many Eeny, meeny, this is what I ask God for. And I'm not going to settle for no more I'm not going to settle for no second best. God, this is the house I want. This, oh no, Shia. This one looks like it, but this is... Uh, this is the man I ask you for. Uh, but this one have rough hair. I need curly hair. You can go back. I wish I'm talking to somebody here. What I ask you for God. This that which I want from you. And I will not take anything else. But that which I ask you for. Because the minute I'm going to take something else. I'm getting ready to get in trouble. And some of us are feeling the consequences of choosing second best. Because you couldn't wait. And God... But well, may I close today. Weeping may endure for a night. But joy is coming in the morning. And although you may have chosen wrongfully, God 
is able to fix it for you. If you'll keep on trusting him, he will do it for you. There's a purpose in every one of your life. And sometimes we shift from the purpose because we don't have patience to wait for the plan to finish. But although you build the house and it wasn't by specification, God has a way in shaping it to suit you and his desire. Don't tear the house down. Don't tear it down. Put it back into the potter's hand. And to God, I made a mistake, but fix it for me. And I have faith enough to trust you. May I talk to somebody right here? Amen. Not because you make some mistakes that mean God is over with you. I didn't hear no amen. amen. Not because you made some bad decisions. God is over with you. Man will be over with you. But God got a purpose for your life. And every mistake you make is to take you to the next level in God that you may know him for yourself. Bring it to him and say, God, I messed up. But with faith, fix it for me. Am I talking to somebody? Amen. Fix it. Fix it, Lord. And wait on him to fix it for you. He will do it for your church. Whenever there's a purpose in your life, there is always a plan to destroy your purpose. But not because on the way you made some errors that God has given upon you. He's coming through. Just wait with faith. And he's going to do it for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There was a purpose in Abram's life. To bring forth Isaac. And any time there's a purpose in your life. The devil will always come with something to try to distract you. But although Ishmael was born, Isaac was coming. Although Ishmael was born, hey God, I wish I helped somebody this morning. Although the error child was born. His name is Ishmael. Although, God, I couldn't wait and I broke your promise. Isaac is coming. Somebody have made some mistakes. And you drop out of faith. 
But God said to tell you this morning, your Isaac is about to be birthed. It's coming. God's promises are sure. You might be crying now, but joy is coming with faith in your mind. God's going to do it for you because he promised that he's going to do it. Don't lose heart. Don't give up. I told you, after every storm, there's got to be a calm. But while you're going through the storm, be faithful. Trust God to the end. And he will fix it for you. I'm about to speak to somebody now. Don't throw in the towel. Get up from where you are and give it to God and have him fix it for you. Man. Man. Will put you down when you mess up. But all men can see is now. And they can see your purpose and your future. And if you follow people, they will abort your future. They I said it again. If you follow people, they will abort your future. Abram thought he was doing well when he chose his nephew. Ain't nobody say amen. I think he's a good boy to take with me. And he chose a lot. But he got over into this land and all Lot wanted was a piece of the lot. Mm. That situation could have deterred Abram's destiny. Have disturbed him. But look at when you have the mind of God. Abram said, Nephew, I don't want no war between your men and my men. So you choose. Oh God. Can I tell you when God have a purpose for you, nobody can stop it. Can I say that again? When God got purpose in your life, nobody can shut it down. Doesn't matter how long it takes. Doesn't matter how old you're getting. When God got up, when, when you're on assignment, nobody can stop God's assignment of your life. Lot was used to disturb his uncle's heart's vision. But look at when you have the mind of God. Abram said, nephew, I don't want no contention between your men and my men. So look your piece of this land and take it. Lot looked for the best watered. I'm going to show you something. I don't have time to finish. Lot looked for the best watered land by the seaside, seafront property, the best piece. Selfish dude. But Abram said, I'm blessed. I am marked. 
So, nephew, take whichever piece you want. I'll take the rest. And he took the best seafront property where he can water his cattle properly. But the blessings of the Lord was upon Abraham because Abraham was faithful <laughs> to God. You see, when you're blessed, you can't be cursed. No man can curse you. No man can shut up the blessings of God from your life when God blesses you. You might not see it right now, but you are blessed. Ah, you might not be walking with the blessing, but you're walking in the blessing. You are blessed. And it doesn't matter what people say about you. You are blessed. Because the blessings of the Lord make it rich. And there is no sorrows. And Abraham said, take the best piece. And Lot took all the waterfront property, which I believe is the most expensive piece. Abraham wasn't worrying because he knew in whom he trusts. And God promised that he will bless him going out and coming in. And Abraham took the rest of it. And they get the surveyor and they mark out. Lot took his, Abraham took his. But can I have you to go further? Look how Lot end up. And look how Abraham end up. Lot end up in wardom, homosexuality. And the very same Abraham. <sighs> let me quit. Let me quit. Let me quit. The same Abraham. That you turn your back again. Because you figure you reach now. Because your cattle is growing and you become a good herdsman. The same Abraham went to God. And said, God, my nephew and my cousins are over there. I wish somebody would hear me this morning. The same Abraham that you turn your back against. Watch while you walk through this land, people that help you don't turn against them. Watch while you walk, people that give you stuff, love them. The same Abraham got to beseech God for his nephew. Lot walked away and said, Uncle, I'm blessed, man. You know what bothers me about that situation? He chose the best piece. Now, when you have the mind of God, you say, well, Uncle, give me what you think is fair to me. I, I want to move on. I don't want to. I don't want to fight with you, Uncle. But give me a piece that you think is fair. He walked around. I think he went and got a survey and said, and put up stake. I want this piece. But it's the same Abraham that he turned against. I had to go to God to rescue him. Abraham said, "God, if you find five. Where you start first then? 50. Went down, to, went down to 5? 10. If you find 50, I believe that my nephew and my cousins will be among that 50. God said no. Went down to 10. The same person who wash your clothes, cook your food, provide for you. Now that you reach, 
now that you reach, you're going to take the best of the land. Go. But I know in whom I trust and in whom I believe that he's able to keep me. That which I've committed unto him. I'm blessed. Whichever way you go, I'm blessed. Because God says I'm blessed. But don't bite the hand that feeds you. God bless you. I hope I help somebody out. One day I hope that we just come and preach for three days and four days and you don't have to go to work or go anywhere. And we just have church. Two days straight. You're saying, hey, minion, you soon leave. As somebody fall out the window and drop and die and we go down and pray for them and they revive again. God love you, full gospel. Stay faithful to him. Don't let nobody distract your joy. God bless you.